Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Wednesday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, which means only one thing. It's time to play Threat Gen Red vs. Blue live on stream with y'all. We've got a banger today. As usual, we always have some kind of bend or some kind of angle on how you can utilize the Threat Gen Red vs. Blue platform to move your cybersecurity program forward to educate yourself as a practitioner or how to leverage it as a tabletop exercise platform, which is incredibly powerful and it's what we're gonna be showing you today. Now, on the stream before, we have done tabletop exercises from a blue perspective. And today is gonna to be a little bit different because you can utilize it in a way that a lot of people don't think of from the red team side, really controlling um, the direction and focus of what the injects look like, having that real detailed granular control and the threat gen platform is fantastic at delivering and supporting that initiative. Well, I'm gonna be joined by Clint Bow Dungeon today, who's really gonna take us through and show us some of these interesting techniques that you can leverage in order to have more enriching and actually value add type tabletop exercise. Stay with us, we're gonna get into all the meat and potatoes. I'm really excited, glad you could join us. Hey, Clint, how you doing, man? Ooh, it's another Wednesday, it's another week, and it's 2023, so doing good. Love it. I, I want to say what's up to all the people uh, uh, piling into the audience here. Hey, James. Hey, Lego Sec. What's up, Amadou? Good to see more house hacks. Everybody, this is going to be a really fun one. Like, tabletop exercises are so incredibly valuable in really identical... Like, not only does it help train your staff on knowing what's going on, but to me, the most important value is that you identify gaps in your current knowledge base and, you know, who does what, in what order, how do you orchestrate and coordinate among different entities. So, Clint, tell us, if you will, how we might be able to use the platform to uh, from the red side, which is highly unusual, um, to facilitate greater, more uh, enriching tabletop exercises. Well, one thing, the first thing I want to mention is that there is a difference between a tabletop exercise and an incident response functional exercise, a fully detailed technical exercise where you're engaging your SOC and you have realistic PCAPs and traffic. That is a incident response exercise, a fully functional exercise. A tabletop exercise is usually more cost effective. It doesn't take as many resources or staff. And so you should be able to do them more often. Now, traditionally, a lot of people don't because these things, um, the traditional ones, still take a little bit of time, sometimes a lot of time, to set up and plan. Therefore, people usually end up doing them you know, once a year, or maybe just to satisfy an annual regulatory requirement, you know, which is, you know, you shouldn't. And I think you mentioned this before, and in the, you mentioned it in our, our promo ad that tabletop exercises are like fitness and exercising, right? So mm -hmm. you don't just lift weights once a year and then get buff or, <laughs> you know, run a marathon once and then have, car, you know, great cardio you have to continue to exercise it. And it's the same thing with cybersecurity, any type of cybersecurity training and exercises. If you don't use it, you lose it or you're not gonna be properly prepared. So mm -hmm. that's the difference between a tabletop and a functional exercise. Now, the different, a, a traditional tabletop exercise is usually done kind of with, with PowerPoint, exercise, uh, PowerPoint slides, mm -hmm. Excel spreadsheets to manage the injects, to manage the scenarios. And you may have a network map using Visio or Draw.io or something like that. And it's the you're usually very pre-scripted. The injects are the situations that the the incident response team encounters. Okay. And another thing I forgot to mention, as you mentioned, a tabletop exercise is meant to look at your incident response plan, 
test the efficacy of the incident response plan, look for gaps, like you said. So it's going to often involve sometimes the technical folks, but not any technical manner. It's all about the procedures that you follow. It's all about the plan and execution and talking to management and legal and PR and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. that's why it's really heavily focused on the blue team and the red team in a traditional tabletop exercise usually is represented by the injects. The facilitator introduces the scenario and injects and it's very limited and scripted. So using red versus blue, because the concept of red team versus blue team means you have a fully functional red team acting against a fully functional blue team means that you can actually get more granular with the quote unquote injects. We're going to still call them injects in red versus blue because that's what the industry calls them. But it's it's more than that. It's not just injects. It's, you're actually controlling the red team and you can emulate the TTPs, tactics, techniques and procedures and you can morph. And then the, the advantage of being able to control the red team is that instead of using pre-scripted injects, you can adjust and adapt just like the, the AI does in red versus blue. But the advantage is a facilitator has more control over it whenever they control the red team. And the missing piece is when we, when we do exercises, uh, whether it's workshops or tabletop exercises, we find out that people love to be the red team. It's, mm -hmm. it's fun. It's yeah. exciting. So when we do a tabletop exercise, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll have a blue team and a red team and we'll do this thing and then we'll take a lunch break and then after lunch we swap. So everybody gets a chance to play the red team because red versus blue is designed in a way to where anybody can play the red team. You don't need technical proficiencies. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. We're going to take a look at how you can facilitate a red team, blue team version of a tabletop exercise where you can control the red team, how you do it. Now, those of you that have played red versus blue, you're like, oh, well, I know I, I know how to control the red team in red versus blue. Specifically today, we are going to look at how to use, we're going to look at the kind of the strategies and the techniques and how you use red versus blue to facilitate that. Somebody just asked, what is TTX? TTX stands for tabletop exercise. Uh, it's just kind of a acronym or nomenclature for that. All right. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do first, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand over the um, commentary back over to you, Jerry, while I get set up. But what we're going to do first, I'm going to show you real quickly how you would set up the traditional facilitator less uh, red versus blue using just the blue. Term. I'm going to show you how you set up traditionally. Then we'll go over the details. Jerry and I will set up a, we'll do a mock red versus blue tabletop exercise. And we'll talk about the details on the things that you want to do when you're using red versus blue for a red versus blue tabletop. So, okay. Yeah, absolutely. So you're going to start setting that up. Yeah. So when, uh, I'm going to just go and bring my screen up here and, and um, well, let's get some questions. I guess maybe there might be some questions that you might've noticed. There was one big question up there. Um, we need to get to those, but just keep in mind. So the pro version is where you, the pro version with the tabletop extension is where you get the tabletop exercise. So you click on the tabletop, the IR tabletop tab. I'm actually clicking on the wrong screen. And then you click your environment. Now we do have, we do have environments that are more than just ICS coming out this quarter, but for now um, you click your environment, it's ICS. And then you have a whole slew of different scenarios and you can choose random if you want to keep people guessing but normally the facilitator will set this up ahead of time if the facilitator has a very specific tabletop exercise that they want to exercise or a specific scenario they set this up ahead of time then show the screen to the participants or you can hit random and nobody knows now with this particular mode you don't there's, you don't need a facilitator to guide the red team or the injects. ThreatGen does it all. It's automated. It, it the, the AI will automatically follow whatever inject or scenario you select. And so what we have is anytime we have new threats, like you have Black Matter ransomware here. So starting this quarter, we're going to be updating all these scenarios regularly. So any of the latest threats, TTPs that come out, They'll be available for you to test again. So you just click it, run and go. So that's how you would do it. Um, 
in the blue team side. Now, but if you want to control the red team, this is where Jerry and I are going to get back and do this together. So if you want to control the red team, mm -hmm. you are going to set up a regular game. So Jerry, let's go ahead and we'll bring up kind of, let's see if we could do this. Like, uh, <clears throat> let's bring up Jerry. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's fine. We'll, we'll just do it like this for now. Um, it'll look so this funny. This is my screen. Yep. Yeah, there we go. Nice. It, hold on. Make sure mine's over your head. Yeah. No, move, move my, move the screen so I'm over. Mine's over my head. Yeah, perfect. There we go. This actually works nicely. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Um, you know, happy accident, Bob Ross. So, so what I'll actually do is I'll go play regular. Now, whenever we do the red team, blue team, the dip, one of the difference between a multiplayer network game and a tabletop scenario game is that the scenarios, the tabletops, you start already in an environment that is already configured. You don't start from scratch. If those of you that have played Red versus Blue, you know that the you, 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 you start from scratch. Now, for the tabletop version or so, um, you, you actually start with a... a the network is already built out. Sorry, I'm, I'm I'm thinking ahead of what I'm talking. But anyway, so you 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 start with the network already built out. So what we do for now? Now we we do have a version coming out to where you actually can play in tabletop mode and control the red team. For now, this is kind of the workaround on how you do it. So I'm going to go into multiplayer. I'm going to go ahead and set up my game, and we'll just do this real quick. We're probably not going to play this whole thing. This is just going to be a now. Uh, this is just going to be a mock-up. With tabletops, when you're setting up a multiplayer tabletop game, you typically want to give yourself a lot of time each turn. Rather than being a traditional red team versus blue team competition, what you want is you want to facilitate dialogue. You want to give yourself plenty of time to talk through each situation, each scenario. So in this case, we'll just give ourselves, what, 15 minutes? Was that 900? Mm -hmm. It may be longer than you want. Maybe you want five minutes, whatever. But you want to adjust your time to be able to give yourself plenty of time to discuss and facilitate dialogue during your exercise. I guess Jerry's had enough. He's gone. All right. We'll wait for Jerry to come back. There he is. Huh? Yeah. Sorry. I was just cold. I had to get a sweater. Oh. You need your winter winter layer like me. Of course, I always yeah. have my winter winter layer yeah, exactly. during the winter life. What did you What did you What did you say during the uh, your your stream during the the Oh 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 oh? But you got Kevin uh, Kevin Hart no. in there. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, you said you called me uh, hot and heavy. Yes. Yeah. Clipo <laughs> Dungeon, hot and heavy on the Thursday unfiltered. That that happens on unfiltered streams. But yeah. No. If I figured if I'm going to be a red team threat actor. I need, I need to have a hoodie, right? I've got to, I've got to, um, you know, it's like uh, method acting. I've got to embody the role. Yeah. Oh, so I guess I should have put a blue shirt on. I put red team, a red shirt on today because we were doing the red team thing. But, um, and by the way, so we did, if you want to see how the traditional tabletop exercise goes with Threatian, we actually did that. Um, there was a, the, the stream is, is here. You're not hosting, Jerry. Uh, I'm hosting. Go into my game. Yeah, oh, you're I, that's, there, what there you that's what I'm doing. Yeah, okay, um, and, sorry, yeah sorry. and so Kamari Yaleen says, I enjoy tabletop exercises. Look at that URL right there. That is actually when we did a full uh, tabletop exercise uh, simulation with chat as the business. It was it was really, really well done. It was awesome. Um, so I'm going to be joining uh, Clint's game here. There we go. So no, we won't be using chat GPT today. Today we're using... Uh, we're, we're walking through a tabletop exercise and how you could do it at your business using the threat gen red versus blue platform. Yep. All right. So another caveat here. So we, we, we're going to give ourselves plenty of time. Now, another thing is since in the multiplayer version of the game, you start from scratch again, like I said, we're going to have an update to where you can do your setup ahead of time. Uh, so you're not starting from scratch because in a, in a traditional tabletop exercise, it's not like you're building your your program out from scratch, right? You're you're starting from something that is that looks like your network. Now we we have had questions from people that said, "Hey, how do I? What if I want the network to look like my network?" Because this is kind of abstracted. This is generic. So if we want people 
if, if you want a network to be that represent more representative of your network, um, this can be customized currently by us, but we do have a level editor coming out later this year that will allow our pro and enterprise customers to configure the network that look so it looks like your network. So you're actually doing a tabletop exercise in red versus blue using your network. Now, since we don't have, since we are starting from scratch using the multiplayer, what we usually do is we'll give each team like 10 turns to get set up. Kind of like doing our chess setup, right? So before, before the red team starts attacking, we let the blue team get their network set up to where it would be closer to real life, right? Now, during that time, the red team can start to set up their team how they want. So basically, you're configure. You're going to spend like ten turns quickly configuring your team. So the blue team and configures their network. Red team, get the skills you want. Start, you know, getting your profile set up. Question. Yeah, and I'd also I also want to emphasize to uh, people watching the stream thinking about using this platform to help tabletop exercises. You should uh, you shouldn't be getting to this point unless you've thought through and planned like what your tabletop exercise is going to look like. What what threat actor are you emulating? What what type of attack are you going to be doing? You're, 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 you don't. This is the execution phase. You should do a planning phase beforehand. What who who needs to be there? What kind of outcomes are you hoping to achieve? So that that would have been all sorted out beforehand and that's what clint is saying when we're spend the first 10 turns manipulating the board to get it into a state that's what we want it's following the plan that we've already developed to get to this point yeah and i want to point out that you know so the, the when you actually use the traditional tabletop exercise mode in threat in red versus blue that planning's already done for you like i said before um and so since Part of the reason why we have Threat Gen Red versus Blue as a tabletop is to minimize the the planning that you have to do. We are going to come out, coming like our, our Prima guide. We're coming out with a doc, a guidebook that that actually has a bunch of predefined scenarios. It's like the the Dungeon Master's guide. It helps the red team um, emulate certain TTPs and things like that. But for now. Let's just go ahead and get this started. So we're going to spend the first, let's just say 10 turns or so, where Jerry, you get to start, you get to power up your profile. You get to kind of build your profile to start to be able to, whatever whatever scenario, let's just say ransomware. Let's say you're going to ransomware yep, me, right? That's what I was thinking. I was yeah. thinking ransomware on IT infrastructure. And, and another quick point to lay out to people. So right now, the current maps all have ICS components or operational technology. Think manufacturing, think oil and gas or whatever. But that doesn't preclude you from using it to kind of represent your own organization. Just focus on the IT infrastructure and endpoint user land, right? Like that, that And that's what we're going to do today. So this is very mappable to any type of business. Yep. And um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and just, well, and you normally wouldn't see this, but, uh, so th and keep in mind my side over here. So my side, this would be like the red team wouldn't see this and the blue team wouldn't see the red team screen. We're, we're doing a mock-up today to demonstrate, to show you how we do it. But normally we often put people in different rooms. So the red team's in one room, blue team's in another room. And so I'm just going to go ahead and get that set up. I'm going to click start game. All right. So, and Jerry would pretend he's not seeing what I'm doing. Uh, again, we're doing this for the edification so everybody can see how this works. I'm in a separate room. Jerry would be in a separate room. And so I would start getting... Well, hold on, Clint. Let me push back on that. If you were going to be in a separate room for, for executing the tabletop exercise, mm -hmm. um, I feel like you'd want to be in the same room, maybe not looking at each other's computers, but the red team, since I'm getting into the level of granularity where I'm controlling the injects basically on demand, I could actually observe some yep. type of behavior happening on the blue team and, and think like, oh, I'm going to pivot because I want to test this, this thought or this person, you know, like, like, oh, hey, like Clint, you're the senior guy here. For the next turn, Clint's not allowed to speak. And then I like detonate ransomware. And let's see what the junior staff have to say. Yeah. And, and 
and I'm I'm okay with that. Uh, and and there's different ways to do it. So if you're doing it like team versus team, sometimes it's just it's more fun to to be and because you can also film it and then do a debrief afterwards. But I know that um, sometimes it's um, hold on real quick. Yeah, and let me while while Clint his thoughts together, let me respond to Richard Richard's uh, message here. Tabletop exercises are for blue teaming and incident response, but but normally so yes they are absolutely for that it's it's for testing the efficacy of your of your uh defenders it's for testing the operational processes of all of your uh business counterparts that need to be involved when you're dealing with an incident like legal executives uh you know third party vendors insurance whatever but richard the threat gen red versus blue platform that we're looking at right now the reason it says how to operate a red team during ttx the 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 name of the stream is because be, through the platform I'm executing as red team, I am going to be able to granularly control the injects. Instead of doing a PowerPoint and just kind of talking about what's happening, I'm able to do, like show what I'm doing and manipulate the, the board, for lack of a better term, on the blue side up here. So then it's much more tangible and observable for the business and for the, uh, the defenders. That, so that's what we're doing here. We're not right. teaching red teamers how to like tabletop exercise their red team. Like, oh no, the defender actually patched their servers. Now what do you do? Like we're not inverting it in order to test. Although that is an interesting use case, Clint, um, to test the efficacy of red team operators. Yeah, like, well, I mean, my, that's what that's what red team versus blue team is about. You know, that's what. It, it, so that's the, the beauty of of, of red team or, uh, versus blue team exercises is that you can test the blue team, you can test the red team, you can train both. Now, if you're a facilitator, you absolutely. And we're going to talk through what Jerry's doing here in just a minute. If you're a facilitator, then yeah, you want to be in the same room as the blue team. If you want to have a little bit of fun and competition with it, where you have red teamers playing against the blue team for a tabletop exercise, then you would. Now, what Jerry's doing is. Jerry is setting up his red team, doing all the research, doing everything that he wants to do in order to get set up to where he can start to execute his strategy, which is ransomware, effectively. He's not allowed to actually start attacking my infrastructure until I have my infrastructure set up to where it represents what my real life infrastructure would be. So normally... I'm probably going to want to have, I'm going to have my firewall. I'm going to go ahead and probably have my network segmented. I'm at policies and procedures. Now, in the planning phase, you can actually say, okay, blue team, here's what you're allowed to start with. You're going to have a flat network. You're going to have a VPN. You're not going to have a SIM yet because we we're going to test what, you know, we don't have threat monitoring. You're going to have all this set up so you can give blue team specific instructions. In in structures. Instructions. This is how I want you to set up. Now, again, Later on, we're coming out with an update that will allow you to have more granularity for you to control how you're set up before you start the tabletop exercise. Right now, this is how we facilitate someone controlling the red team in a tabletop exercise. All right, wonderful. So let me... Oh, I still got some things going on. All right. Where is... And of course, you know, right now, this is just a mock-up. This is um, normally we would be playing this toward Jerry. Uh, Jerry wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing on blue team. And I wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing on red team uh, like we've played in the past um, if we're playing against each other like this. But so I just want everybody to understand that's what we're doing here. That's why he can see my screen. I can see his screen. So um we're just going to pretend, I'm, I'm, you know, we'll, we'll pretend that I can't actually see what's going on. Was, okay. All right. So when you want to talk through what you're doing and how you're setting yeah. up your profile. Yep. So, um, you know, my, my, my threat actor approach, what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to be doing, uh, my ultimate ob objective is ransomware on the IT infrastructure. Uh, I want to attack from the internet because I want to. I want to basically do what Lockbit does. Um, a very famous, well-known ransomware threat actor group. They get initial access. They they sniff around. Uh, sometimes they buy the initial access instead of doing the hard way, which is what I'm doing. 
but for the sake of this discussion, um, I'm doing that. So I'm, I'm getting uh, some fundamental skills like re weak passwords, default creds. I'm getting an understanding of how to like find their network. I'm looking at Shodan for lack of a better term, and I'm going to uh, try to get in there and attack them. Uh, I'm also learning about, uh, I'm, I'm working my way through the skill tree to learning about vulnerabilities and fuzzing. So kind of leveling up my game and be able to find that stuff. And then I'm also, um, you can see I, I'm starting to learn these things. I'll also be doing, um, I, I, I will likely be doing electronic social engineering or, or excuse me, human social engineering as I begin to start uh, uh, spear phishing uh, threat actors, another very common uh, technique into initial uh, access. You need electronic social engineering for that. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not human. Human SC is like on site. Like yeah, physical. yeah, yeah. And again, right, so this is the kind of stuff. So yeah. So you as a facilitator, if you're new to Red versus Blue, you may not know these things. That's why we have a guidebook to help guide the Red Team and facilitators to know how to set up their Red Team for certain TTPs. Yep. So I'm basically just continuing to research. Like Clint mentioned, um, the first 10 turns, if you're going to be executing a tabletop exercise with this level of granularity, the first 10 uh, is like an opening chess move. You're basically just uh, manipulating and, and formatting what's going on. And then you're, um, you're then you, then the exercise begins effectively. Um, I've got my skills. You can see from my action log, uh, my OSINT recon's almost done, which will allow me to start scanning. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass the turn. All right. Um... I'm not going to, I was going to just keep it. Yeah. For, whenever we're, um, since we're focused on the red team for now, we can just go ahead and keep it like this. I'm just going to run through because we're not really focused so much on the blue. Okay. Team now. Okay. That's fine. But we'll just keep it like this for now. Um, I'm literally just going to run through some things. Um, All right. So my there, Ocean... once mm -hmm. we actually get past the setup phase, I have a few comments about the blue team. Other than that, we're going to focus mostly on the red team side now on how you set it up to do your TTPs. Okay, so I got my OSINT done. I'm still doing my research here. I'm going to continue doing my re weak research, uh, password research, and uh, basically do a Shodan scan. All right. Just, just lining up everything. All right. All right. So we completed our electronic SE. We did our first scan. So here are some assets. Uh, oh, we're yeah, going to go were... ahead. So go remember, ahead. you're not supposed to start attacking the infrastructure yet. I, I wasn't. I was just doing recon. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 And that's, and again, it, there, there's no hard and set rules on what you're allowed to do during this. Whoever the facilitator is, whoever the, the, the director of, the exercise would be makes the rules and you set up how you're going to set up. So yeah, if y'all feel free to do scans and recon everything externally. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going on site. Um, I'm not penetrating you, Clint. Um, so completed That's good. the first that would be very uncomfortable. <laughs> completed that first port scan. Uh, you can see here we've identified a couple devices. Again, I'm just going to enumerate them. You would be able to do this from the internet all day, every day. Okay. So yeah, this as long is as they're still... internet facing, absolutely. Yeah. So we're just lining things up again. Doing research is basically me, you know, attending Simply Cyber webinars, uh, going to classes, uh, Googling, watching YouTube videos, et cetera. So uh, I've got my queue lined up. Go ahead and end the turn. Allergies are killing me today. Yeah, it's tough. All right. Yeah. Just so you know, Clint, um, like on the Daily Cyber Thread Brief, the people are talking about it in chat the, the, this morning on the Daily Cyber Thread Brief, and for un, un, completely un, un, unknown to me, I like lost my mind. Um, so th that's kind of what they're talking about there. Hey, um, you know what? Yeah, I like I like this cross community chat. I mean, you know, that's uh, yeah, that's awesome. good. All right, so we still are doing our electronic SE. Um, now, oh, by the way, now that um. Now that I've got um, service enumeration, I can do some fuzzing, right? So 
Um, actually, I'm gonna do find public phones because I want I don't I want to um, be able to. Buy, oh, hold on one second. I I, I loathe losing a. Um, I loathe losing um, my uh, uh, resources here. So let me let me do this really quickly. Again, I'm not playing the game. I'm teeing up the scenario, and I, I'm just so neurotic that even when I'm teeing up <laughs> scenarios, I want I don't want to lose resources. So I'm going to do all of this, and I'm going to do evade network detection, which is basically um, it prefers an evasion technique to avoid detection by IDS. Okay, so. I'm just adding that right now, and I will make that part of the exercise, okay? So, in fact, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to make it part of the exercise. I want the blue team to discover me. I want to be noisy. I'm not going to take advantage of that technique um, because this is a first time doing tabletop exercises with my organization. And I, I almost just made a grave mistake that a lot of people make. And let me let me emphasize this. When you're a red teamer or pen tester or simply a facilitator at a tabletop exercise, the goal is not for you to win. That is not the goal at all. The goal is for the organization to be better at information security after you're done with the exercise. So I, I almost just fell into the trap because I'm competitive by nature, but it's not about you. It's not about winning. It's about everybody learning and improving overall. So don't, 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 uh, flex on the blue team. That's not going to help you in any way. Yeah, unless there's a predetermined uh, sort of challenge that you want to present to the blue team. But that's right. A tabletop exercise is all about exercising your incident response plan, but having the ability to play as the red team actively, number one, is more fun for a team. Number two, gives the facilitator um, more control so that you're not just doing predefined injects so that you're actually um, you can adapt and give the blue team more of a challenge um, and, it, and it's more in using red versus blue obviously it's more graphical it's more immersive than just using powerpoint slides and excel spreadsheets etc so um, i also want to point out that when you're setting up, as Jerry said, he's setting up his scenario, getting ready to effectively execute his TTPs by getting set up. I am setting up with the blue team side. This part, the setup should happen relatively quickly because you should have it mapped out. You should uh, ahead of time already have, this is what we're allowed to have in our infrastructure as the blue team. And on the red team, these are the TTPs we're going to execute. So this is how we have to be set up. So you should go through it relatively quickly, more quickly than what we are doing here for the demonstration. So we have about three turns left to get set up. Let me yep. just do a couple things. Okay, I've got three uh, resources available. I'm going to do my final electronic SE, and then um, actually, let's do this. Instead of doing electronic SE, let's do this. Now, this is interesting because I'm going to do a spear fishing attack at some point here, Clint. And if it works, um, I know it works and you don't know. And if it doesn't work, I know it doesn't work and you don't know. So I, I, I think it's interesting. It'll be an injection point where you say, hey, I successfully spearfished this person uh, and make you aware of it. I won't tell you what I've compromised. But again, this is a difference between the gameplay and executing a tabletop exercise. Well, and then, yeah, in the, in the tabletop exercise also, it's about detection and response, right? So if I don't have my infrastructure set up to be able to detect those things, I won't actually know that I have been attacked or something happens until you ransomware a machine. So that you're setting this up however you want it to unfold in real life. That's why some planning needs to, to happen here. And again, we're going to have guidebooks to help set up kind of like a dungeon master's guide with with. Uh, with adventures to help set up, you know, pre-existing TTPs and, and everything like little campaigns. Um, yep. All right. So, and again, we're not going to go through the entire, we're not going to go through an entire game. We're really just going to get to the part to where we're starting the exercise mm -hmm. and then you would just go from there. So another thing to mention is that 
there may not be scenario specific um, notifications in the in this version that we're playing because it's not set up as a tabletop scenario. You're creating the scenario as you go along. So you still want the facilitator, the blue team, to tell the story. You still want as something happens, the blue team can the, the blue team facilitator can still add narrative. You can still add story to it to make it closer to what you would have in in, in real life. All right. We found some vulns, which is good. Um, you can see here our action log says that we fuzzed we, electronic SC. Um, we found some vulns. Now, we got a cross-site script in zero day on this guy. We got stack overflow on this guy, zero day. And integer overflow. So I think we're about ready to go. I'm going to just do a um, the um, stack overflow research. And... I think Clint, once we're done with that, um, I'll be about ready uh, to, to execute because I've got, I've got what I need. I've got, um, yep. you know. Yeah, and then let's just go ahead and say so. We're at turn nine. Um, like we, were, we were going to turn ten, so let's just we'll I'll just go uh, here. Just one more turn. Okay. We'll just well, pass and it. I, and once I, we get to turn ten, we'll say the exercise starts. Setup is done. Exercise starts. And the exercise is going to start because I'm executing the spear fishing attack to land on turn 10. See it? Yep, yep. So the exercise will begin. Okay. Yep, hey, everybody. We're here. Let's rock and roll. Yep, and there we go. <clears throat> so now... So now we have the exercise that starts. And this is where on the blue team side... Which I'm going to show this you. Is in, and this is, in our, this is in our guide... It's very important. So we, you know, we have, you know, plenty of time up here during each turn. As we go forward, the purpose of a tabletop exercise is to facilitate dialogue. So we're not playing the game. We're using the game to illustrate the decisions that we make and the actions that we take. And so that we have visuals and it's immersive and it's realistic, right? And, and again, we've abstracted. This is a, a network that would represent closely to something that you would have in your organization. It can be customized to be exact. We can have plenty of assets. We can replicate your network map in here. Um, some people want that, some people don't. We have found that if you get too detailed, because it's just tabletop exercise, it's not a functional technical exercise. So if you get too into the weeds and get too detailed, we find that people start arguing a little bit too much about the semantics and about the technical details. And that happens all the time with your, when you get into a tabletop exercise with PowerPoint slides or, or Excel spreadsheets and Inject and all of that, what happens is, is that there's no boundaries and it's kind of free flowing. And so you always have your engineers and sorry, engineers, but your technical people and your engineers saying, well, that wouldn't happen on environment. We have this. And you spend a lot of time arguing about hypotheticals because you don't have the boundaries. You don't have the details. So if you have too many details, but not all of the details, you get into those arguments. Whereas if you abstract it and you're focusing on this is a hypothetical approximation of our network and we're testing our incident response plan with it, you focus on what's important for that exercise, which is your plan, your procedures, your process, your response, and you don't get into the technical aspects of it. And so that's where red versus blue here really helps eliminate those issues because it takes care of the boundaries and it gives you those boundaries. It gives you those rules and said, look, this is how it is. So, all right, I think then we're going to go ahead and well, Let's go ahead and say, well, opportunity to install our. And, 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 and again, I'm not going to focus on the blue team side here. This is mainly making sure that we show the red team side. Uh, so I'm just going to, you know what? Clint's uh, going through the skill tree, which is how you take actions in red versus blue. You know, like installing a SIM or configuring logs, putting EDR, updating antivirus, all of the activities you would do in a blue blue operation or security operations format is the actions that you take in the game in the platform itself. 
All right. So looking at red team here, let's go. Let's go full on the red. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, like so we've started. I've successfully spearfished uh, an asset in the environment. Oh, and fortunately for us, I couldn't control this. But fortunately for us, this is the mail server, which is part of that IT infrastructure that I like. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I guess now becomes the opportunity to to, to begin to control the uh, exercise. We might be now now now. Here's a perfect time where like the blue team should not be seeing the red team's screen, right? The red team. Here's here's what I would say about this. If you're going to do this, this level of granularity, the red team can see the blue team and the red team can see the red team. The blue team cannot see the red team. The blue team can see the red team. So yeah. for an example like this, I might say, <clears throat> you know, all right, hey, uh, blue team, just so you know, uh, it, somebody in your environment <gasps> has fallen for a spear phishing attack and we have successfully compromised one of your assets. One of your assets has been compromised in the environment. So that's... That's one inject for lack of a better term. So you might actually pause it right here and say, okay, like we have successfully told you that one of your assets is compromised in your environment and you have no visibility right now of it, of it being compromised. It could be shadow IT. It could be a network device that doesn't have EDR on it. It could be uh, numerous things, it, it, an, an outdated version of a system, something in a lab, whatever. Let's talk about it for a second. If 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 you knew there was a compromised asset, but you didn't know where it was, what might you do to discover that asset and have that be a conversation? Completely reasonable conversation, okay? And completely realistic scenario. So that's one one opportunity right there for, for a 15-minute conversation, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is... I. I I'm going to install ransomware because that's definitely the goal, okay? But I want to do uh, something else here, okay? I'm going to install ransomware and I'm going to exfil data, okay? And stay with me. I'm not going to install disruptive malware. That's not the goal. Uh, but I'm I'm going to... Yeah, here, here's the thing. I'm now focusing on this. I'm going to exfil data and I'm going to install ransomware. And the idea is if... While the conversation's happening, um, they've talked through what they're going to do. I'll pass their turn to them. And now the blue team can take action potentially on some of the things that they talked about. Oh, we'd, we'd, we'd look at it in our SIM. Well, you don't even have a SIM yet. So if that's what you think you would do, put a SIM in place. Oh, we would put EDR on all the critical assets and see if those are the ones that are compromised. Okay, well then do that. Whatever it is that they decide or discuss, they can now in the platform actually take those actions in the environment and see if it actually helps reduce risk and this is a great opportunity where if you're a junior like say you're not a senior seasoned professional okay like let's say you're trying to run this tabletop exercise you've been at a job for three years smaller business but you're trying to make some gains right you may not know like if they put a sim in it, it, is that better then putting, uh, updating antivirus on key assets or putting EDR on key assets or whatever, like whatever the different decision points are, maybe you're not a practitioner of 20 years and you can't weigh in on the merits or the pros and cons of the two different options that the team is coming up with. That's fine because in the threat gen red versus blue, you can have them come to some consensus and decide to take action on that. And then you will actually see what it looks like when you made those decisions and because you can play it multiple times you can take a different path and see what the efficacy is of those decisions and that to me clint that's a real value add to the platform is that it allows people with less experience to deliver quality at you know like learnable outcomes based on their decisions yeah and and, and another thing too is you know you kind of had a little a little story that you did with the, the red team. Here's what happened. And that can be anything. And you, you could also say something like, okay, you just, this is where your inject would be, right? Okay, we just had a um, an email, uh, a, a user reported a, a suspicious email. And then you could just be that, right? Maybe maybe you don't tell the blue team that you've got compromised, but you tell them that they've, you've had a report, right? And so this is where the facilitator comes in. This is where the facilitator tells 
narrative or st you, you have stories and you make a narrative to the events that are happening and unfolding with the red team. So you're kind of, like I said, you're kind of like a little game master or a dungeon master and you are providing that narrative to facilitate the dialogue um, as it unfolds. And it, it may be that, you know, the red team is seeing the blue team and you kind of have the, the red team is in full control. But even if not, even if you're just doing kind of a team on team and the red team doesn't see the blue team, then you can also do it to where at least the facilitator knows what's going on on both sides. And I've done this before to where I've got a red team and I have a blue team and they don't see each other's screens, but I'm narrating to the blue team what's happening. So I, I will, I see what the red team's doing and then I'll go and I'll tell the blue team, you just had a suspicious uh, pop up on your machine from one of your users. And, and then, so I'll tell a story and have narrative to illustrate and to provide context to what the red team is currently doing. And that's, that's how you go from just playing a red team, blue team competition to turning it into a tabletop exercise. The facilitator in this case is narrating providing context for what the red team is doing and or if the in it or and it's even easier if if the the red team uh, the facilitator is controlling the red team then it's kind of easier because the facilitator knows exactly what that what they want to do um and again if let's say you're not creative you're a facilitator and you're not creative and and you don't know well how do i do this how, how do i know how to set this up well that's where the threat gen guides come in and uh, the the facilitation guides come in all right. Exactly. Um, all right. In this case, um, I and we'll just focus on it. And I, I just been told something. I can't do anything. So this is where I'm going to have my blue team talk. We're going to sit there and talk about what we're going to do. Like Jerry said, in the meantime, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pass the turn over to him because I can't do anything. All right. Now, check this out. We've successfully exfiltrated data. OK. Check this out. What I would do as a facilitator right now, because I have successfully done this. Whoops, I'm clicking on the wrong picture. Since I've successfully done this, I did not install the ransomware correctly, but this is a perfect opportunity where you go, okay, so here's an update to the situation. Um, you know, threat actor sent you a note saying they compromised one of your assets and to be scared or whatever, like a hacktivist or whatever. Now that we've exfiltrated data successfully, I can do one of two things as a facilitator. One, I can say, okay, now let's get ransomware in um, or, or denial of service or whatever we want, brick their machine or send them a ransom note with a sample of the data and say, hey, we're gonna, ex we're gonna sell your data on the black market unless you give us money. Um, executives, what do, you what, do you, what do you think about that? Or the way I like to do it personally is, hey, um, Data has been exfiltrated successfully from the environment. The threat actors have posted it on Pastebin, a sample of it, or they've sent a sample to the news. And it's there's a literal news report running right now that your like Acme Inc. has had a uh, is has a, had a potential cyber attack, and that data has been publicly leaked. PR, legal management what what do we do in this situation we have our our data we have it's emails guys it's the email server that was compromised so you can literally say hey we have internal sensitive emails that are now publicly accessible on the internet and the the newspaper is on the phone wanting to get a quote what what, what do we do let them talk through it right let them talk through it then maybe you inject and say um well, while you guys were discussing it, some some end user in our environment was also called by the news and they told the news what they had, what they thought and what they experienced. A lot of times organizations don't want people talking to the media on behalf of the organization. But if you don't have policy in place, if you haven't educated your end users, they don't know any better and they don't know not to do that. So just with this one step of exfiltrating data, you've got another 25 minutes of discussion around what is protocol? Who are, who's doing what? Do you even acknowledge it? What, do you activate incident response? Okay, so that's just just a hot, uh, a quick thing. So while that's being discussed, I'm gonna go ahead and attack the fire. Oh, I'm gonna do a password attack since I spent all that time and energy um, doing my skills. Okay, and what else? What else might I do to uh, 
help uh, facilitate discussion. While you're doing that really quick, somebody said have chat GPT write you a scenario. Now, um, interestingly enough, last week, we talked a lot about chat GPT and cybersecurity. And then the week prior to that, Jerry and I did an episode here where we had chat GPT play red versus blue. We are in the process because I trained it on that. We are in the process of doing a fine tuned chat GPT or GPT three model so that the, the chat GPT or GPT three has all the details about red versus blue in it so that you could actually then have chat GPT generate a scenario for you. Um, and so that's one way to do it. And we're going to actually be integrating that into red versus blue so that it could generate scenarios for you in game. So that's one, one area that we're going with this. Uh, I've passed the turn. So I'm doing a password attack on the firewall and I'm trying to harvest creds from the, uh, mail server. Neon Nomad wants to know what a newspaper is. I'm showing my age. I guess a, uh, a, a, a like a, a news media outlet via Twitter is asking for, an, uh, for a comment. <laughs> All right, so our password attack failed. Let's do it one more time. And we will try to install ransomware again since that was our goal. <clears throat> All right. And again, so, um, and we're, we're kind of glossing over the blue team side here, but, you know, this is where, um, you know, the blue team had some dialogue and discussion. They decided what actions they're going to take and what they're going to do. So that's all happening. We're just glossing over the blue team side right now, again, because the focus here is to show you how to use the red team side in Threat Gen Red versus Blue to do a tabletop exercise where you can control the red team or do a red team versus blue team type of exercise as a tabletop exercise so that you have more than just pre-written, pre-scripted uh, injects. And it's, it's just, and it's just quite frankly, it's a lot more fun. Exactly. Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and push this over here. Oh, we got ourselves a pivot. All right. So we successfully compromised an asset. Now you can see here, um, just FYI, you probably should have pitted off that email server. If, if the gold is ransomware, um, you probably should have done a host scan from the mail server. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, true. So I that can... you can start to move laterally. Yeah, I messed that up. So it looks like they put a VPN in. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and do a password attack on it. So at this point, um, you you could do, like, again, there's a little bit of storytelling involved with it. Um, but... I basically was able to do a password attack on the gateway firewall. It didn't work the first time, which makes me believe that let's assume it wasn't default creds, but it was a weak password, no MFA, which is not uncommon really to a network device, but you could say now, all right, Hey, listen, like guys, um, one of your network devices in your environment has been compromised, right? They don't know which one there's only a couple, but you don't know which one, but let's talk about for a second. It, and it was compromised with uh, a weak password. So um, let's talk about operationally, like how are passwords on network devices controlled? Like, let's talk about it because oftentimes they're not controlled through AD. Okay. The networking team um, will set it. Maybe it's the same one everywhere. So this is a great opportunity to say you had a weak password. It got compromised. A, 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 a firewall is owned right now, allowing lateral movement. How, like when technology comes in, like junior person or network engineer, you can bring IT in. When new technology comes in, with when network devices come in, who's responsible for configuring them? And like, okay, so like uh, Clint is. Okay, Clint, let me ask you, when you configure it, how do you do it? Oh, I've been a network engineer for 25 years. I know what I'm doing. Okay, but is there any... Is there any SOP? Is there any validation? How do how do you know that you didn't accidentally overlook changing the default password or ensuring that the password is hardened? Oh, I don't need this. Okay, well, what I'm hearing is that that's a gap. That's a weakness. There's a there's an opportunity here for improvement. Not that you're not great at 25 years of network engineering, but there needs to be some type of checklist apparently. Or, well, don't say apparently because that's that's uh um 
aggressive, not aggressive, but combative. But ba basically, your identif the, the goal is that you're identifying weaknesses. And if not having creds check, like someone go back and validate that it's not um, a password that's weak or that they're not all using the same passwords across the network devices. That's another common technique. Um, it's a weakness that you uncover and identify. And then frankly, you can actually talk to the business and say, hey guys, like, is there a reason that you're using the same password everywhere? Is there a reason that you don't validate that the network devices are configured correctly? Like, like help me understand why that's the way we do it here. Because maybe there is a business case for it. Likely there isn't. Likely it's convenience. Likely it's, I, I don't want to say laziness, but li likely it's convenience. Uh, but this is a great opportunity. Again, something as simple as compromising this gateway firewall unlocks an entire conversation um, around what to do. Okay. Yeah. Real Go quick. Ahead. Yeah. And I, I would say that, that, um, two things. Number one, like Jerry says, every single action that succeeds, every single compromise that happens in the game is an opportunity for the facilitator to tell that narrative, add that context and tell a story. That's something that turn. That's something that you do here that, that is part of, I mean, that, that you would do that in a traditional tabletop exercise. And that's the crossover technique that makes this part of the actual player versus player, Threads in Red versus Blue platform, um, makes this into the tabletop aspect as opposed to just playing a competition against each other. I would also want to mention that when you do that, you want to make as, as the facilitator and as you're controlling the red team as a uh, as a facilitator you want to tailor your plan you want to have a plan of attack and you want to tailor it and plan it out so that every action that you do each asset that you compromise facilitates the story that you want to tell in that scenario so um the difference between this then and a traditional PowerPoint or inject based tabletop exercise is that when my players, my, my players, my, my, my team, my, uh, my participants, when they go off script and they want to do something else, or if something doesn't happen the way I'm expecting to, the game allows you to pivot and do other things and take other actions and take it a different direction. Um, so, you have the framework there to help facilitate pivoting and going in other directions. Whereas if I had a regular tabletop exercise, if I didn't script for it, I got to start thinking more off the top of my feet. So um, it's, a, yep. it's a tool that just helps the facilitation. I have a really quick, uh, there's a question here. Um, WGLs. Yeah, so yeah, can the game question. be saved then resumed later? We did not originally design the game to be saved because the games weren't supposed to be that long. It, it, the games were meant to be played in a single session. There's no long campaigns or anything like that. But we've had some requests uh, from a lot of customers to be able to do that. I guess if they have you know an exercise um, from, for two reasons, if there's a long exercise going on or if they happen to like lose connection or the internet, I don't know, some whatever, they want to be able to come back in where they left off. So we do have that on our roadmap. Yeah, it's definitely a great idea, a good function. Um, you know, even taking the 10 turns to get the scenario set up. I mean, you could do that in advance and be able to, uh, in, in, you know, install the save file and be able to yeah. rock and roll. Yeah, and that's, that's basically where, um, that's basically one of the main reasons we want to have a save load function is so that basically you can get everything pre-configured, pre-set up, um, and then save it and then just load it. And then there you go. So we'll, we'll, we'll that's on our roadmap. Stay, t stay tuned. So, I mean, we're getting to the end of our time here. And so I just want to mention that and that's kind of, we, we've kind of covered everything that we wanted to cover, right? And we didn't want to go through a whole game to the end of the scenario or anything like that. We just wanted to, kind of show the caveats of you know there's one way to do threat uh red versus blue threat gen red versus blue as a tabletop exercise that's through the the traditional tabletop exercise functionality so i'll just go back to it real quick and again for those of you that that, that hasn't seen it so um there's your you know your actual ir tabletop exercise module and that is where 
the AI runs against you. And this is where we have all of our pre-configured TTPs and scenarios. However, some people, and what my experience is, people like to play the red team. They wanna have more control. Um, that's not something you typically get in a traditional tabletop exercise is where you can let your participants play as the red team or have the facilitator have more granular control over that. So um, this is an, that's kind of really just what we wanted to cover was how you would do that using the player versus player over the network multiplayer functionality of red versus blue to do uh, a red team controllable tabletop exercise. Yeah, absolutely. And another uh, point to emphasize here that we're seeing in market around um, kind of uh, continuous uh, threat exposure management, attack surface management, breach and attack simulation, which is a much more technical uh, control like that allows you to rapidly do uh, pen testing exercises per se. Because the traditional way, it takes months to like line up a pen tester team and get it all sorted out. There's a there's a par parallel here. A lot of times tabletop exercises take months and months to prepare. Oftentimes you have to hire an external staff to come in, facilitate. You've got to get everybody's calendar lined up. Um, it's very, very time consuming. You got to get uh, a conference room. You got to get the food, the drink, the lunch. You got to make sure that you have a great um, facilitator, the PowerPoints, right? You, it's a lot of work, okay? With the Threat Gen Red versus Blue platform, uh, well, a couple of things. One, you could actually do it um, remotely because everybody can see the game board and everybody can follow along. But even, in, I would prefer you do it in person. But even if you do it remotely, it does allow you to rapidly spin up and walk through multiple scenarios so you can really focus on like hey guys today we're going to just be talking about like um when spear phishing hits or when phishing hits and how people know how to go into exchange online protection and look through fishes or know how to look in the sim and see what telemetry there is like the whole point is to set up something so you can test your SecOps team and their capabilities and their understanding of what's appropriate and for engage like when we did the pay spin data drop like how is is management even thinking about data getting posted on the internet what what are the protocols for that so it, it really allows for you to go deep on niche things and really work through them instead of trying to get the biggest bang for your buck since you're only doing it once a year and try to do all the things to, to me that's a real value proposition clint is that because you can do it rapidly over and over again you're you really can like get laser focused on looking at a certain skill or capability and refining it and improving it yeah and, and you know and like i said there's uh, when you, whenever you go in manual whenever it's easy to use the pre-configured scenarios facilitator list mode but you know you have more granular control when you do it the way we did it today and but it does it does take somebody who's experienced in cybersecurity, obviously, and it takes somebody who knows how to create that narrative and context on the fly. Uh, but if you don't have that, like I said, we have guidebooks coming out for that. So anyway, that's the end of our time here. Um, if you have any questions about this, reach out to us. If you're interested in, in checking out how to use red versus blue as your tabletop exercise, reach out to us, love to talk to you. We do have, we have demo videos on our YouTube channel, like all the information's on our YouTube channel. And you can also just go to threatgen.com uh, for more information. There it is. Thanks, Jerry. So anyway, Jerry, thanks for joining us. Thanks for hanging out with us and um, helping me facilitate kind of how to do this. Uh, so I hope everybody got some value out of this and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Any, any, anything, any, any, I think you kind of said your final words, but you want to Jerry Springer us or anything there, Jerry? No, <laughs> no. I mean, I had a great time. I love seeing the flexibility and power of the Threat Gen Red versus Blue t um, platform. I do want to say shout out to the Simply Cyber community that joined the stream. I saw Carrie, WGL, LegoSec, Neon Nomad, James Randolph, oh, the, like, and a whole bunch of others. Tom Bishop was in there. Um, really appreciate the support, the stream. I hope everybody got value out of it. Hit the like on your way out. That always helps. We love that. Uh, and we'll see you um, next Wednesday. Uh, Clint, what's the stream for next Wednesday? Um, I'll announce it. I'm going to announce it uh, tomorrow, um, but uh, it's going to be more chat GPT fun. Ooh, all right. Well, stay yep. tuned for that. And uh, we'll see you guys uh, next week in the Threat Gen Red versus Blue, 1130 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let's play. Yep. Take Thanks, it easy, y'all. Don't, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.